Good night, good night. Have one Johnson. I got this good and got this good all the time. My name is Irma Jess Pretty Divine. I'm here to give you um work on tonight. And the topic gonna be um raising a driver's um daughter. Um gonna raise her um from death. You know, and he gonna she gonna try he gonna be persistent and he gonna hunt Jesus down. He gonna buy down to Jesus and beg Jesus to come here. Could I come here, his daughter, bring his daughter back to life by touching him. Because he didn't know how powerful Jesus is. Jesus can just touch him you here. You know. So this story about Jer Jairus, um, dead dog. Now he is the ruler. And when he found Jesus, see, he was desperate. You know, he found Jesus. And he nailed down, you know. And he said, please come and help my dog. Please come up and put your hands on my daughter so she can live. You know, so Jesus will proceed a miracle stated that she is sleeping. Now, see, the father says she's dead. But when Jesus get there, Jesus going to say she's sleeping. You know, so Jairus arrived, arrived uh, with Jesus morning for his daughter, saying she's dead. Jairus said, come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus, take me to your home. You know, so Jesus got up and he went with him and his disciples. Okay, so the story is going to come from um, Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 through 26. Jesus was bringing Jesus back to his, his dog. You know, so um, now he found Jesus. He knelt down to Jesus. He begged Jesus to come to follow him to his house to touch his daughter to bring her back to life. You, you know, so, um, so as it was going... To his house, one of his people said, "She's dead." You know, don't bother the teacher. Any father, you know, they figure they figure ain't nothing Jesus can do. They must have known how powerful Jesus is. You know, so they they like, she, but she dead. You know, you, you ain't got to bother him. You know, and there's nothing else he can do. You know, so Jesus said, "Don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed." You know, see, healing is all about believing. You know, have faith and believe that you are here. When you, you pray to Jesus, because you know Jesus to heal. You know, we have to pray to Jesus for healing. You know, and when we pray to Jesus for healing, we have to believe that we are here. You know, that's the only way it will work. So when Jesus entered the house, it smelled like dead. You know, you know when someone, someone is dead, you can smell it. So, so Jesus smelled, smelled that when he entered the house. So she was dead. She was dead. She, and she started smelling. You know. And then when Jesus entered, there was no. You know, it was a big crowd. You know, because the daughter is dead. So, you know, everybody in the neighborhood was there. So, it was very noisy behind Jesus. So, Jesus told him to go away. Now, the girl is not dead, but asleep. And the crowd mumbled and laughed. You know, so when he said the girl um, only asleep. They laugh, and when Jesus ordered the crowd to leave, cause see when they laugh, you, you know, for Jesus to um perceive this miracle, that mean they didn't have faith. You know, you have to have faith and believe to stay there in that room to see Jesus perceive that um miracle. But they want to laugh, you know, they wasn't fit to be in that room while he perceived that miracle. So he, so he told them to leave. You know, he don't want them hanging in a room just giggling and laughing all behind him while he trying to perceive a miracle. You know, so Jesus said their behavior was um, um, improper, you know, for uh, expressing grief. But it was it was proper uh, for expressing grief, but it was not fitting climbing for the miracles that were about to happen. And see, that's what I'm saying. You know, Jesus said they was grieving over um, the left girl, but by their laugh. It wasn't appropriate for them to be in that room for Jesus to perceive that miracle. So he, he told them to leave. You know, y'all got to get out with all that noise. You know, I saw the movie. You know, it was a whole lot of noise while Jesus entered in there to try to, you know, see the girl. You know, so Jesus gave life and power over to death. That is life after death. You know, because we know that. That is life after death. Because we, we remember Jesus died. Jesus rolled back up three days later, you know, and he was he was real, just walking around back with his disciples, you know. So when Jesus said she sleep, mean death is temporary sleep. 
you know, remember Jesus died and he rose back three days later. You know, so if Jesus says she sleep, you know, she temporarily sleep. She temporarily sleep. You know, you know, Jesus woke up, looked, said, rise up. You, you know, so don't laugh. When Jesus said, Jesus is a powerful man. If he says she sleep, she sleep. Don't don't laugh. You know? So Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. You see what I'm saying? All Jesus had to do was touch her hand. Touch her hand and she sat up. You know, although the Lord forbid touching the dead, the Lord forbid touching the dead, Jesus did not hesitate to perceive this miracle. You know, that's just like on a Sabbath day. You know, if Jesus had to put, um, uh, heal somebody on a Sabbath day or uh, bring somebody back to life on a Sabbath day, he's going to do just that. You don't worry about no, no law about on, on a Sunday day or on, or on not touching somebody and all these kinds of Jesus is going to perceive that miracle, you know. And so Jesus perceived this miracle by a touch. Remember, he touched her hand, you know, of her hand. And he called from death to life with a word. You know, see, that's another thing. All Jesus got to do is speak words. And all he got to do is touch you and you are healed. You know, so she sat up, and the first face she saw was Jesus. First face, face she saw was Jesus, and that was a, a, a wonderful, amazing face to see when you wake up from the day. Now, she saw what Jesus. Now, Jesus also gave her something. Jesus also said, give her something to eat. You know, don't, don't, tell, her, don't tell her how long she was sleep. You know, Jesus said she was sleep. So, if she was sleep. You know, for a long period of hours or whatever, wherever it was, you know, you know, when you wake up, you know, from being asleep so many hours, you're hungry. So Jesus said, give us something to eat. Give us something to eat. You know, incredible, unforgivable gift to her and her parents. You know, because see, the father hung Jesus down. You know, he was resisting. He just kept on trying to find Jesus until he found him. You know, just like that, um, that widow I had told you. You know, you have to be positioned on your, on your prayer and everything else, you know, for things to work. You know, he kept on hunting and hunting until he found Jesus. You know, he knelt down to Jesus to come and help his daughter. Now, Jesus said, um, you know, food for the body and food for the spirit. Now, he told her to go give her something to eat. You know, give her food for her body and the food also for the spirit. You know, because, you know, we have, to, we have to feed our spirit, too. You know, for us feeding our spirit is God's work. You know, so Jesus said, don't tell no one, but the news are just spread so fast. Now, Jesus said, don't tell no one, but the news are already spread. Remember, he had a crowd already. You know, he sent the crowd outside. But still, the parents probably ran and say, oh, she alive, she alive. You know, and they probably weren't in the room when Jesus said, don't tell nobody. But they already had to spread the news and spread the news all over. So, um, I'm going to read Luke chapter 8, 54, 55. You know, but he took her by the hand and said, my child, get up. Her spirit returned and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. You know, that's amazing. You know, she was sleep. Jesus said she was sleep. She was sleep. She woke up home and Jesus said, give her something to eat. You know, so before she had gotten sick and died, she probably, and you know, um, probably was like, uh, she was a 12, she was 12 years old, 12 years old girl in the village, you know, just a normal, regular child, and, until she got sick, you know, she returned from death, uh, she could never be the same, you know, you know, she, she returned from death, after death, you know, she, she would never be the same, you know, she will always remember this moment, waking up and seeing Jesus' face. And I know she said that was amazing. You know, so to wake up and see Jesus face to save you. Who saved you? You know, who woke you up from being asleep? You know. So those who have looked look at death in the face, face to face, and yet live in a security and a um, destiny, know that you will not die until God ordained. You know, a lot of time when we die, when someone dies. You know, they die for real when God sustained, you know, and sometimes, um, sometimes somebody can be sick real bad. They can be shot any time or well. If God not ready for you, he going to ordain for you to still live. 
you know, and when he ready for you, then it's your time. You know, it's God make those decisions who live and who die. You, you know. So uh one, we see when Jerry's um told Jesus about his daughter. Jesus immediately had compassion on his son. You know, he immediately had compassion on his son. You know, when he told her his when he, he told Jesus his daughter, you know, um, first his daughter was sick. You know, he let, then he said he thinks she's dead. You know, he said she's sick. So that's why when they was walking to the house, that's why his people said she's dead. You know, don't bother the teacher. You know, they figure ain't nothing else he can do. She's dead. They don't know how powerful he is, no matter he's dead or not. You know, sometimes Jesus take a long, because you know Jesus had two situations. You know, when the, when the Jerry said told him about his daughter, he was supposed to head on to the dog. But then this woman came behind him and touched the him and his, his gone. And she got hit from bleeding from trial, yes. And then Jesus, you know, so that's why, that's why the girl, she, she was sick at first. You know, Jesus took a long time to get to her. So the time they was getting to her, they said she already dead. You know, because Jesus had another situation he dealt with as he was going to um, the root of the house. You know, and, and then a woman, Jesus didn't even touch her. She, she touched Jesus. She immediately was here because you know why? Because the woman spoke them words before she even touched Jesus. She said, only if I can touch the hem of Jesus on um, close, I can be here. And you just don't know, when you speak those words, you already was here. That's why Jesus told her, you already here. You know, you can go ahead on. You know, she don't realize the words she spoke before she even touched Jesus. She was already here. You know, you were already here. That's why they said the words are very powerful. They come out of our mind. And sometimes that's all Jesus do. Speak words and then he'll touch you and you are here. You know, now this woman healed herself by speaking those powerful words out of her mouth. You know, if you speak those words like, only if I can touch Jesus, you know, I can be healed. You already is here. That's why Jesus said, you already healed, woman. Your faith will heal you. You know, because she spoke them words. That means she had faith when she spoke them words and she was already here. Jesus told her, go ahead on, you here. You know, so Jesus had compassion on this little girl. You know, remember, Jesus is a loving person. He has compassion on every one of us. You know, two, um, seek God in position that we see that this ruler um, hunt Jesus down and he dropped to his knees and begged Jesus to come and place his hand on his daughter so she can live. You know, so he was positioned because he was all over looking for Jesus until he finally found Jesus. You know, so he would be he was being positioned on trying to find Jesus so Jesus can heal his daughter. You know, so um um three have faith when Jesus said she sleep they all laughed they they did not have faith. You know, so when Jesus when Jesus says so, have faith. You know, by they have faith. Jesus told them, y'all got to leave. You know, you have to leave the room. You know, they had to leave the room because it wasn't appropriate for them to stay in the room to, for him to receive this kind of miracle. You know, because see, they laughed. So that means they didn't believe that Jesus can bring this child back to life. You, you know, so they had to leave. You know, so, uh, so for to proceed, yeah, to proceed this miracle. You know, they had they had to leave. You know, so uh one, Jesus touched the girl by her hand. You know, all Jesus gotta do is just touch he touched her by her hand. And then Jesus spoke words and said, Arise. Jesus spoke words and Jesus touched her. You know, and she sat up and the first face she saw was Jesus. You know, you had a mama standing right there. I saw the movie, had the mama sitting right there. I had other people standing right there. But when she sit up, she made sure she turned around to see Jesus first. You know, so Jesus is a powerful. He is very powerful when he can just touch you and heal you and restore you back to life by words. You know, so this is a powerful man. You know, you don't have no reason to lie. You know, if he says somebody sleep, they sleep. You know, he is very powerful when he can just touch you. And then he can restore you back to life by speaking words. You know, so now we see that Jesus' miracle is by a touch and a spoken word. 
you know so what a woman a woman now we see we, these are miracles that jesus had to see jesus had this woman had touched him and his clothes that's what had him late gone to the little girl in which jesus didn't mind because he wanted her to be dead so he could proceed his miracle you know so in the process of going to the man this woman here had touched him and his clothes and before she touched him his clothes she said only if I can touch Jesus' clothes, I can be healed. And this woman believed for 12 years. She'd have been to all kind of doctors. Nobody could not heal this woman. Nobody couldn't tell her what's wrong with her. But the touch from the hem of Jesus' clothes healed this woman. The bleeding stopped. You know, she was just immediately healed. And then Jesus felt the power that released from him. He had to turn around and ask, who touched me? You know, and the lady was so scared. She was so embarrassed, you know, to tell someone, you know, about your bleeding problem as a woman. You know, it's just like a woman, you know, you don't want to tell nobody your period down, you know, and you, you just got to go to the bathroom, you know. So that, you know, she didn't want to be, you know, telling him her personal um, business, but then she had to tell him because Jesus stood there. He was waiting for some answers, you know, so she finally came forward, kneeled down, and told her, told him all her problem in her situation, you know. So Jesus said, you already is here, you know, so you, you could go ahead on, you was already here, you know, because she was here after she spoke those words, you know. So, too, we saw that, we see that Jesus touched, Jesus touched. And he spoke words to this woman that was bent over for 18 years. You know, this woman was bent over for 18 years. She couldn't even see her, her face. She couldn't see nothing, nothing. You know, until she saw Jesus. Until Jesus saw her. Jesus saw her across the, across the, across the way. And saw how she was just bent over. You know, so Jesus went over there to her. And she told Jesus she was been like this for 18 years. You know, so Jesus touched her. Jesus spoke words and she started strengthening up. You know, she started strengthening up. You know, so uh, then another situation. We saw, we see that Jesus, Jesus can touch a coffin. You know, where somebody dead is in a coffin. All he had to do was touch him. You know, and the person came alive and he spoke words. You know. This is powerful. And now we see that he touched this little girl hand. And he spoke words and this little girl set up. He brought her back to life. You know, so we see all these six different situations. You know, he the woman just had to touch in you know, her bleeding stuff. You know, and, and Jesus had to touch this woman and strengthen this woman up after 18 years. And all Jesus had to do was touch a coffin. And this man had still got a uh, rise up and he was alive. And now we see that he touched this little girl's hand and spoke words and she came alive. She restored back to life. You know, this is a powerful man. When you can touch him or he can touch you, you are automatic here. But see, you have to believe it. You have to have faith and believe it. And see, that's what Jesus told the parents in the crowd. You know, since they weren't allowed to me, they didn't have faith. So Jesus told them, y'all had to leave the room. You know, they, they weren't fit to be in this room for this particular um, miracle, Jesus said. You know, because they're like, you know, you have to have faith in Jesus perceiving a miracle. You know, and that was a big old crowd up in there. There was so many people up in that, in that room. You know, so they were making so much noise when Je Jesus entered. So when Jesus had walking towards the girl, he said, oh, she's sleeping. They just bust out and left. Otherwise, she was sleeping for real. And just like Jesus was dead, he rose back up three days later. You know, so we see. So now we see that Jesus touched. And Jesus can speak words. And you can restore back to life. You know, and all Jesus had to do is touch you and you are here. Speak words and you will restore back to life. You know, Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah the son of God you know this passage is about faith and belief you know so have faith believe that Jesus can heal and restore you back to life you know and when Jesus said they are sleeping believe that they are sleeping and do not laugh you know 
do not laugh. But just like they laughed, just to them, they had to leave the room. You know, they weren't even fit to be in that room to perceive this kind of particular um, miracle. You know, so remember that Jesus died. He returned three days later. You know, so if Jesus said she will sleep, she will sleep. And when she rise up, Jesus said, give us something to eat. Give us something to eat. You know, because we see this package is about having faith. Having faith and belief. Belief that Jesus can restore life back to you. Believe that Jesus can touch you and bring you back to life. Jesus can touch you. Jesus can teach. Jesus can speak words to you, and you will rest restore right back to life. You know, He restored back to life three days later. You know, and He's a powerful man. He's a powerful man on earth. You know, and down the line, I will come out. I have my own. Um, Research, I will come out with a lot of miracles that he did. You know, his first miracle, you know, the wonders that he did on earth. You know, his first miracles, he turned water into wine. You know, now, you know, I was pre I will preach on the, a lot of wonders and miracles that this man did on earth. You, you know, he was a he was a, he was the light of the world. You know, he was a good teacher. He always teach and power. You know, he perceives so many miracles. I ain't gonna be able to do all the miracles. I think I got about 10, 10 of them down. But he did so many miracles. He did way more than 10. You know, that'll take up two videos. You know, but he did wonders on this earth. And I want to preach about a lot of wonders that he did on this earth. You know, he was on this earth for us. You know, he not only um, was on this earth to sacrifice his life for us, but he also teached that word in the Bible. For us, for giving, you know, they've made a lot of mistakes in the Bible. And Jesus had preached and teach uh, the, the correct way to live on this earth besides making the wrong errors that they did in the Bible. You know, so uh, the Bible is our correction, it's our, our guideline. The Bible is our guideline. And Jesus taught a lot of the guidelines in the Bible to his disciples and to anyone that wanted to hear the word. You know, so this is a powerful man. So when he when he preached that word, if, if he tell you now right now we don't have Jesus with us, they have Jesus with us with them. You know, all Jesus, all they had to do was touch Jesus. Jesus, did, you know, remember I preached on the day Jesus just walk around the neighborhood. You know, you could just touch him, you could just touch him. We can't, you know, but we can still call out on the name of Jesus, and we can still get the same service. You know, but when we pray in the name of Jesus for healing. Of anything that we need, we have to have faith and we have to believe it, and we will, and we will get the same service that Jesus did right back then in the Bible. You know, because you know Jesus here, here, on um, history, and you know, Jesus is still alive. You know, so we can still get the same healing that they got way back in back in the day. You know, but you have to pray, and you have to believe and have faith. You know, we don't have Jesus right here. But Jesus can still, Jesus still is a miracle worker, you know, and you have to pray and you have to have faith and believe after you pray to Jesus for him. You know, he is the healer, you know. You see all the healing and restoring that he did back then, you know. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this word and this practice pretty much about faith and, and belief. You know, have hope. You know, and always, we don't have Jesus here, you know, but still, we can still have that connection with Jesus through prayer, you know, so y'all have a blessed day, and i see y'all in the next video.